To notch or not to notch? That is the question. Clearly the answer is to not notch. Please stop notching phones. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. All right, so we've got RTX, we've got the prices, but the performance is still relatively unknown. The one thing that we know for sure is that with an RTX GPU, a line is drawn between rasterized and ray traced performance and rasterized only performance. This became even clearer after I watched a Battlefield 5 analysis by Digital Foundry on ray tracing. A lot has been touched on during the analysis, but here are some few key points. First, ray tracing is not optimized yet in gaming, and I mean really not optimized. You can tell by a few factors. 1080p performance is around 60 FPS on Battlefield 5's implementation, and that's using a 2080 Ti. One of the reasons for this is the lack of asynchronous processing. The game world is fully rasterized before ray tracing even touches the image, which means that the RT cores and the Turing stream processors aren't working in parallel. According to Alex from Digital Foundry, implementing asynchronous processing could boost performance up to 30%. Another point that shows how the game doesn't use all the tech in an RTX GPU is in the ray tracing itself. As we know, ray tracing at least in gaming is not a one-to-one -one visual representation of the reflections. What I mean by that is that the reflections and shadows are grainy by nature since ray tracing every single ray would be too taxing on the GPU. That brings me to the method that Battlefield 5 handles the graininess. It uses a custom denoising filter to fill the gaps. That means that the tensor cores are left unused and that DICE isn't using the AI trained denoiser filters from NVIDIA. Since the denoising filter is taxing the Turing cores, that means less FPS for you. At least that's what I think since we don't actually know if the limiting factor here are the RT cores or the Turing cores. That brings me to wonder, what is going to bottleneck what? Is it possible that the RT cores could bottleneck the Turing part of the GPU? Could the tensor cores slow down the RT cores? This is probably all going to be exposed in the future, but I just wanted to share this observation with you guys. I mean, we know that CPUs can bottleneck a GPU, and we know that when an SLI or Crossfire, the GPUs will always run at the lowest speed of the two cards. So what happens inside a die when a specific technology is taxed more than another. Anyways, those were my observations. If you want to see the full analysis, the link is down below. As for a game that would be fully rasterized, I mean, I expect the GPU to outperform whatever was in the last generation. It's really interesting though that one of the first games that come out and take advantage of ray tracing don't use all of the tools available from NVIDIA. All right, let's move on to some phone news. The Pixel 3 has been leaked. Not the Pixel 3 XL, which apparently has reviews on it online, even though it's not out yet, but the little brother, the Pixel 3. The phone looks like kind of a mini Pixel 2 XL. I mean, there's no notch that's great, and it has stereo front-facing speakers and a dual selfie camera. The screen has a two by one aspect ratio at 2160 by 1080, and the battery is said to be around 2900 milliamp hours. So if you want a no-nonsense, no-notch Pixel 3, you've got one. Moving on to some gaming news, Battlefield 5 is getting delayed. Instead of an October 12th launch, the new game in the franchise will appear a month later on November 20th. DICE says that the reason for the delay is for final adjustments to the core gameplay, but we know that pre-orders are lacking on the game and that Battlefield has a tendency to undersell when the launch date clashes with other games like Call of Duty. Black Ops 4 is slated to release on the 12th of October, and it's pretty odd to see a game delayed so close to the release date. Usually delays are announced a few months before the game release. It will be nonetheless interesting to see if that will help them sell more copies of the game on week one. All right, let's talk live stream. The first boot sequence live will happen this Sunday on the 2nd of September at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I hope I'll see you guys there. The notification for the stream should pop up in your notifications this Saturday, so make sure to set a reminder for it. Now let's answer a question from you guys, and today it is, with boot sequence up and going, how often do you focus your time on music creation? I unfortunately haven't made music in a while, mostly because my MIDI controller is still in store, 
storage and I wanted to have my place done before I could actually set up everything. But I still mess around with the program sometimes just like with old instrumentals that I might have. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the news guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop me a like down below and a comment with a question like my man Zach just did. Click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel and stay frosty. Your screen didn't freeze, it just stopped moving. Stay frosty, I'll see you on the next one. This is Boot Sequence.